Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Old Time Rock and Roll. I'm your host, David Tear. Um, where I've been uh, doing a new feature this year, uh, counting down uh, my personal top 3,000 rock and roll songs of all time. Uh, I'm up to number 2992, which is uh, Play With Fire by the Rolling Stones. Uh, this was uh, uh, first released as a single in 1965, along with The Last Time. Um, it was double, I guess, uh, yeah, The Last Time was the A side and Play With Fire was the B side. Uh, I think the last time hit the top 10. I don't think Play With Fire hit the charts, but it was the B-side of the single, and it was also released on this album, Out of Our Heads, uh, in one of the early uh, Rolling Stones um, recordings. And uh, I think the Rolling Stones are a really great group. They were, I think after the Beatles, they're probably my second favorite group of all time. I have 40 of their songs on my countdown. This is the... The last of them, so I guess number 40 on my countdown. I think it's a really good song, by the way. Uh, you don't hear it a lot. I, I first heard it on this album called Hot Rocks uh, when I was a teenager. I think it was in the late 70s. My sister and I bought this album. Really good album. It has all the early great hits. Uh, um, they were a really, really great band. And I think this is probably the best uh, compilation album of theirs because, you know, this is when they did their really great stuff. Uh, you know, they were one of the early British invasion bands, and they're still playing today. I mean, it's amazing. I, I think Mick Jagger, I think Mick, Mick and Keith are probably both in their 80s now, and uh, I don't think they're anywhere nearly as good as they used to be, but they're still performing, and pretty amazing that they've been performing for, for over 60 years, you know. Uh, I just want to say one more thing about this song, Play With Fire. Um you know, when I first heard it, it's kind of funny. It's it's an interesting song. I mean, you know, Mick Jagger sings solo on it like he did on a lot of his songs. And, uh, uh, you know, you can't always understand everything he's saying. I guess he kind of made that a little bit deliberate in the way he's saying. But I remember when I first uh, heard this song, there's a line in there that says, your mother, she's an heiress. And and uh, this is an example of Mondegreen where I didn't quite understand the lyrics. I thought he was saying, your mother, she's an Aries. And, you know, I mean, I I can just imagine how, how uh, his girlfriend would react if he told her that. How did you know that? And then it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how he would know that. Uh, but, you know, kind of like the graduate, I guess. <laughs> anyway, that's what I thought he was saying. But uh, no, he, he was saying that she was an heiress and she owned a block in St. John's Woods. I guess his girlfriend was, a, you know, she had a rich mom and... The whole point of the song, you know, you're playing with fire. I guess it was like he was kind of giving her all to meet him. I mean, one thing about the uh, Stones, uh, I do really love their music, but I think a big reason I prefer the Beatles to the Stones is the Beatles were, were. I mean, the Rolling Stones had a bad boy image. I guess I guess I just never really got into that much. Uh, you know, like they, they, you know, Mick, uh, all of his songs are like, you better not mess with me. You know, I'm not going to take any shit from anybody. Kind of. I mean, that's kind of the basis for most of his songs. And some of them were even like Sympathy for the Devil. I know that that's one of his most popular, the Rolling Stones' most popular songs. I, I'm kind of wary of that one. I mean, you know, I don't know what the point of that song. He claims to be the devil. And also, uh, uh, it's only rock and roll. You know, he talks about committing suicide on stage. I mean, I don't know. I just, I just never really got into that kind of dark image i guess the doors had some of that too but you know uh i, I guess i like the beatles because they were more clean cut their music was very cheerful e even when they got kind of wild in the late 60s i mean most of their songs were very positive like all you need is love i mean they got into all the peace and love stuff and you know i think that's really what made the, the 60s great at least in my opinion but you might you might disagree with me i don't know I'd like to hear your opinions if if you want to share them with me. Anyway, that's my uh, profile on uh, um, uh, play.